guys, it's Di from Be Mommy with Style, and so I did a total recap of our trip, talking about all the different parts of our trip and that sort of thing, but I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about the Disney Resort dining options at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the table service options that we used, and then also some of the quick service stations that stood out to us or were our favorites, and I will put all the links to the separate videos down below of all of the separate meals that we ate at, and I'll try to put all that footage in a separate video. Video. So that way if you're searching out one specific restaurant, you can just find that specific video down below. So, in the order that we ate at the restaurants, we ate at the Acre Shoes Royal Banquet Hall. We actually asked the gentleman that was our waiter how to say it because he was from Norway, and he said, think of it like Seuss, as in Dr. Seuss, and it's Acre Seuss is how he was saying it. I say it wrong every single time, but Acre Shoes, Acre Haas, Acre, however it comes out in Norway, is a really great princess character. The table service that we went to was another character breakfast. This one was Kate May Cafe, and it's located at the Beach Club. This one was one of my favorite clips from the entire trip of Natalie as Donald Duck is walking up to her table and she's going, yee! One of my favorite clips, absolutely adorable. I absolutely love that clip. One of my favorite parts of the trip. Um, so we ate there in the morning, and then later that night at Magic Kingdom, we ate dinner at Be Our Guest. This is obviously a very hard reservation to get. A lot of people talk about this reservation, so I'll talk about our thoughts on that. Tusker House at Animal Kingdom was another character lunch we ate there. Love this one. The characters were fantastic. And then Cinderella's Royal Table was our last table service reservation type of place that we had in the castle at Magic Kingdom. I mean, you guys can probably already tell if you watch the Day in the Life video, absolutely magical time. So then quick service places that stood out. This wasn't all the places that we ate at, but the Starlight Ray Cafe or Cosmos Rays, it's right in Tomorrowland. We eat there a lot. We eat there like two times on this trip. Great food, really easy to get in and out, and you have a great view of the castle, which is what I really like about eating there. We usually try to sit over in the bank of the tables. It's kind of in the back, quote unquote, and you have a beautiful view of the castle, and it's never usually that busy back over there. So we love eating there. It's just kind of a dual, really nice view, and just kind of an easy place to get in and out of. Then also Pizza Planet at... Um, Hollywood Studios. Now, I know a couple people like warned me before ahead of time, like, oh, they didn't really like this one, but we actually really liked it. We thought the food was pretty good, so it's, I guess it's like the, a whole different taste, or maybe we just hit it in a good night. Um, we thought the food was good, and the girls loved the atmosphere, so that one was a lot of fun. And then also Studio Catering Company at Hollywood Studios stood out to me because after reading all the reviews beforehand, I was really kind of leery of all the food at Hollywood Studios, but I think that Studio Catering Company at Hollywood Studios had the best salads of the whole trip. So I always go ahead and put that out there. So first of all, table service. All the character meals that we went to, absolutely loved all of them, would 100% do every single one of them again. So we've done the Akersus at Norway and Epcot a number of times, so this is a return trip for us. And comparing that to Cinderella's Royal Table, because I know that was a question that had been asked and kind of a hot topic as well, they're a similar idea in that it's a princess lunch for both of them. When you walk into the Akersus, you have your picture taken with Belle, and then walking around is generally Cinderella, Snow White, Ariel, and Sleeping Beauty. And then when you go into Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom, you have your picture taken with Cinderella. Then when you go upstairs, Ariel, Rapunzel, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty are walking around. So Rapunzel is kind of the different thing there. And the atmosphere in both of them is really, really nice. We loved the atmosphere of walking up the steps and going into the castle and just everything was very ornate and lovely. We really liked the atmosphere. We had fantastic service also, which I think makes a huge difference. We had fantastic service, especially at the castle that night. Our server was amazing, just amazing. He was wonderful. And it just made the whole experience wonderful. Even though everyone was kind of winding down, it was the end of the trip, we were all tired. Um, we had great character interaction there and the server was amazing. So for our upcoming trip, we have booked Cinderella's Royal Table again. It's prepay, it's already paid for it. And for, we're, for Epcot, we're actually opting to skip Epcot on the next trip because we've been there a couple times in a row. So that's not to say that we won't go back, and if we go to Epcot in the future, I definitely will consider going to the Acre Haas again. And also we ate at Coral Reef. We really liked that as well. There's so many great food options at Epcot, it's really hard to 
like narrow it down because there's all the different worlds in the World Showcase and they all have really good restaurants. So it really depends on what you're in the mood for. But we thought that Epcot had really great food. We like both of those places and we would definitely return to those. However, on our next trip, because we've been to Epcot a few times in a row, we're opting to skip that theme park. So for our next trip, Cinderella's Royal Table won out of those two. Um, and the experience is just amazing. Now, by the time we go back next time, they will have closed it, refurbished it, and then we will be returning. I'm interested to see how they're going to refurbish it because I thought it was lovely in there. Uh, I know I read reviews occasionally of people thought it was outdated or, you know, this and that. I thought it was lovely, but I'm more of a traditionalist as far as, you know, just general decor. Anyways, so we really loved that experience. Yes, it was the most, exper most expensive meal out of all of them, but you're eating in the castle. It's amazing. Do I think that we'll do it every single trip? Maybe not, but it was an amazing experience and I want to do it again very soon. <laughs> So um, next, going to Cape May, so we've compared the two princess lunches. Cape May and Tusker House were both the character meals that had more like the Fab Five. At Cape May, there was Goofy, Donald, and Minnie. They walked around. You could get your picture taken with them. The kids loved seeing them in their beach gear. It was a really fun breakfast. I loved the breakfast experience. It was great. And breakfast is also the cheapest meal to go if you're going to be doing a character meal as well. So it was the least expensive meal out of all of the character meals that we went to. Tusker House, we went for a lunch. They had a buffet. I showed all of that in the video. The characters were in their safari gear. And I will just hands down say Tusker House characters were the cutest characters ever. I mean, they were adorable. They're in their safari gear and they were having fun with it, interacting. And so I would also say the character interaction at Tusker House was the best character interaction we had the whole trip. The characters were great. They would grab like the girls' stuffed animals and make them bounce on the table and they spent a lot of extra time. A couple of them came around twice. Tusker House was amazing. I highly, highly recommend it. Now, as far as Cape May, if you want to do like a Fab Five breakfast versus the Fab Five lunch. We really liked Cape May and I would definitely consider eating there again. For our next trip, I have opted to try out Chef Mickey's because that was the reservation I was originally trying to get and couldn't get it. The difference between Cape May Cafe and Chef Mickey's is of course Chef Mickey's has Mickey. Cape May was missing Mickey. He's not a character that goes to that one. So the girls really love seeing Mickey. Mickey was a Tusker house. They love seeing Mickey when we're at Magic Kingdom. So I wanted to try out Chef Mickey's on our next trip. So we won't be returning to Cape May on our next trip, but it was a great meal. We absolutely would return there. We didn't have a bad experience in all of our dining. I will just put that out there right there. All of our dining was wonderful and we returned all these places. Tusker house, we're going to again. We all like the food. We like kind of different food sometimes. We like spicy food, most of us, but they had a really great selection of, you know, the kids don't eat spicy things, but they had plenty for them to eat. We thought the food was great. Tusker House will be returning to, I have lunch reservations, and we love the characters there. They were just so cute. Be our guest. So this is the last one. This is not a character meal. So the two ones that we went to that weren't character meals were Coral Reef at Epcot, where you're sitting next to the aquariums. Loved it. Thought the food was really good. Would consider returning there again, but we're not going to Epcot on our next trip. And then the other non-character table service meal we had was a Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest is amazing, and it's hard to get into because it's new. So reservations were incredibly difficult for me to get. As non-resort staying guests, so we stay at my dad's house in Orlando if you're just catching us from this video, and things like the lunch fast pass option that are available for resort guests are not available to us, and then other things that you have to be a resort property guest to get the reservations earlier aren't available to us obviously because we stay at a family member's house. So I, I booked this trip a little bit later than, you know, the average hardcore Disney enthusiast does. I think I started booking it about three months before we left to go on the trip. And so Be Our Guest reservations were gone, long gone by that time. I started searching almost 180 days out for our next trip and they're gone already for that. So you really have to get the Be Our Guest reservations early or just get lucky and grab a cancellation as it comes up. So I started checking daily on the website and then once I got within a week, started calling. I was that pesky person that started calling the WDW dining line 
and eventually was able to, between one cancellation and a reservation that popped up online, combine those two reservations and got a large enough reservation for a whole party to eat at Be Our Guest. It was not a small feat. It took a lot of being online and checking the reservations constantly and then calling back repeatedly. So we eventually got our Be Our Guest reservation. It was amazing. It was great. Beast was there at the castle. He doesn't walk around at the individual tables, which for us was good because my older daughter was a little bit scared of him and she was like, he's not going to come to the table, is he? So we had to reassure him, no, he's going to stay in a study. You can go see him if you want, but you don't have to. The castle inside was gorgeous. I love the falling snow. I love all the detail and just, it's really neat because on the outside it doesn't look as big. It's kind of like the TARDIS. It doesn't look as big on the outside and then you walk in and it's just this grand hall. It's, it's amazing. It's really beautiful inside. We also thought the food was really good. I got the shrimp and scallops, which I loved and would definitely eat that again in a heartbeat. I believe two of our family members got the ratatouille, which they also really liked. The kids didn't really eat their food that night because they were both exhausted, um, but we did have dessert, and dessert was great. I got the gray stuff for the dinner version, which I thought was great. I would love to try the lunch cupcake at some point, if we could ever get in at lunch. Um, and then my daughter got the strawberry cupcake, which I thought was fantastic. So long story short, I would like to eat it be our guest again. It is like literally the hardest reservation to get on Disney property, in my opinion. So I'm already trying to get reservations that are already sold out for the time that we're going to be there next. And, you know, we'll see whether or not we end up getting in for a lunch or a dinner or what ends up happening. But I thought it was great. If you can get the reservations or if you have that lunch fast pass available to you, I think it's worth a try. We really liked it. And so that pretty much sums up, you know, all of the character meals that we went to, what we thought about all of them, what we will be returning to. Definitely let me know if you have any specific questions down below. But just across the board, we thought that the food the whole trip was fantastic. We really didn't have any bad meals, per se. Um, I think that people maybe didn't prefer, some of the people, it's not that they didn't prefer it, but you know, if you have a reservation like Coral Reef booked, you have to be in the mood for seafood that night. And I think that we got there that night, and a couple of people really weren't in the mood for seafood by that time. So going forwards, the next time we end up at Epcot, I think my goal is going to be to get a reservation at Garden Grill, which is the Chippendale, like, character meal. I think it just sounds hilarious and cute. And I think that especially if we have the grandparents with us, the grandparents would probably like that. Um maybe over seafood. I thought the seafood was great and I thought that the experience was great although the girls slept through the whole thing and that was really who I booked it for. <laughs> so I thought the girls would love being next to the aquariums and then the girls ended up sleeping through that whole meal. Um, but you know it was really great and I wouldn't hesitate to eat there again. I think that there's so many options at Epcot though it's really hard to keep going back to the same place over and over there unless it's a princess lunch of course. So that's it. So for next time, we already have reservations booked at Cinderella's Royal Table. Um, we're eating there for dinner again. I thought the dinner was amazing. I got the shrimp and the steak and the clock strikes 12 dessert and the cheese tray and my appetizer. All the food was wonderful. And then we also have reservations at Chef Mickey's like I had mentioned. We have reservations at Tusker House. And we also have reservations at Hollywood and Vine. Now the story on that is I actually had reservations at Hollywood and Vine at Hollywood Studios, which is the Disney Junior character meal. And I just started feeling like we had too many reservations. It does really box you into a certain times that you have to do everything when you have all these dining reservations. So I let that one go and I ended up regretting it. So I think I want to try that one just once. So we're going to try that one on our next trip. So the ones that will be new to us next trip will be Chef Mickey's in Hollywood and Vine. And then I'm working on getting Be Our Guest, but I don't have that one secured yet. So if I get it, we'll be going to Be Our Guest for dinner. And if not, we may try to do standby for lunch. So those are our Disney dining opinions and what we're planning on doing next time, what we thought of this past trip. Let me know if you have any questions down below and thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.